Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Firm. I'm your host, Alex Gore. I'm here with Lance, the benevolent, the chill, the go with the flow, the no way he wrote this in the show notes, Psycho. And know what's so funny? He didn't write it in the show notes. Talk about chill. <laughs> How's it go? <laughs> it's my middle name. <laughs> Lance Chill Psycho. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out to our course, buildabetterco.com. Uh, talk to the members each week. One of the members said it was pretty funny. Uh, he goes, I like how last week you touched on one of the concepts, but just touched on it. Um, mm. And then I'll add is because in the course, it's so much deeper. You know, there's just, it's, it's organized, it's accountable, it's systematic, it's, implementable you know and all that other stuff so uh go check it out build a better co.com build a better co.com if you can't find the product data you're looking for you might be using the wrong search engine broad search results result in consumer products out of date information and websites that don't that hide or don't have the information you're looking for. If you need specifications CAD or BIM arcat.com is your search engine first find and download the up-to-date data you need fast. Arcat.com is free and requires no registration. So try Arcat today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. The other place I want you to try is go to PellaLuxury.com forward slash the firm because you are going to experience a collection of brands that brings your creative vision to life. The luxury division of Pella is a world-class collection of brands including Duratherm, Riley, and Benelli, all pioneers of industry who provide window and door solutions to discerning architects, the building industry, and beyond. During this new year, we know how important it is to step back and spend time in gratitude. We appreciate all our clients trusting us with their projects in a record-breaking year. We are excited and ready to take on the new year of 2023. The luxury division of Pella doesn't push beyond limits. They set them. Explore PellaLuxury.com forward slash the firm today. Back to me. Back to you, Gore. Who's it back, back to? Back to me. Back to me. Perfect. So I used one of your suggestions, and it worked. Uh-oh. And one, So one of the things Uh-oh. that... We do for commercial projects, Interesting. Um, especially when it's, I wouldn't say a new typology because mm. it's not, but like this is a significant project. It's a cool project is we go and tour whatever facilities they Aha! have yes. and maybe other facilities, right? Yes. And I mentioned this. Al in- learning gore. <laughs> Al learning from Lance Gore. It's just amazing. It's my middle name. my protege. <laughs> just a little, little protege guy like <laughs> me and Nick. <laughs> hey. It is out here. Tagging along. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> So I mentioned that in the meeting, but um, I sent over the proposal. Yeah. What did you mention, though? What did you mention? I just mentioned, like, hey, once we get started, we want to go visit your facility. And then I mentioned a couple others that we've done, um, and we'll make a whole morning out of it. Also, you're not going to get the mic sick if you eat it. I'm just saying. <laughs> our, viewers will, our listeners will appreciate that. Sorry. The way, the way that this sickness is going around. It might. What if it goes <laughs> into this microphone, if you're watching on YouTube, Yep. and then... Through the cable, through the mixer, back over to me. Yeah. Possible. There's no way just because we're looking at each other it would go that way. But this is the better way. My Actually, my... So, like, next... Okay, can you write this down? Lance Immune Psycho. Lance <laughs> Immune Psycho. Yeah. All right. That's going to be my middle name for next episode. Lance. Thank you, Al. Appreciate that. Okay, so you mentioned. I, I will mention. I think two weeks ago you were sick, but that was probably just a fake sickness. It was, th- it was actually. It was three weeks ago. You're right, but it was a real. It was weird. I don't know. It was a goofy one. I think it was actually like a different, another version of you know what. So uh, I got. So to continue. Yeah. Sent them the contract and all that, um, and then like I talked to them a couple days later, and they said, "Hey, they were making their decision in about three weeks," and then I thought, it would. I should be really clear with this because clarity cuts through a lot of confusion yeah. so i just emailed them back and said hello team let me know if you're interested in touring el dorado colorado's el dorado climbing walls and also trunk truck ranch i would be interested in seeing your current facilities as well i would be more than happy to make a morning of it because this is a typology that you have not well it, it, it's a it's a warehouse facility 
um, that also has offices. So like we've done, I mean, we've done enough of moderations. One, we've built a whole bunch of steel buildings, um, designed them. Uh, those two are examples of them. And then we've done a lot at the Erie Airport too, where it's yes. that like, same industrial setup. Even though you fight me a little bit on the light industrial, like I'm telling you, we do a little bit of light industrial. Like it's okay to say, yeah, we do a little bit of light industrial. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So email reply certainly would be interested in touring those. Let's set it up. Oh, it's okay. So you sent the email, and then how long did it take them to get back to you? Was this like almost instant? No, seven days. That's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but at least they did. Yep. Good. I like that sales tactic. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. But but in this instance, just to clarify for the audience, you guys aren't going and touring their competitors like we did with the brewery. With their friendly competitors, too, I will emphasize yeah. that. You're, no. you're touring commercial projects that we have done to try to help. Yep. And the difference is a brewery you can just show up to. True. You can just. They don't even know you're touring it. Yeah. I mean, in this instance, they did. But I don't forget, like, even though Al is saying that, like, don't don't forget, like, if you're, if you're going to do that, um, and hopefully they're friendly competitors, we went into the breweries and saw exactly how they worked. Yep. And they give us a tour. You know, so I'm with you. Well, actually, here's a question. Did you just go on the public tour, or did you email no, them? No, no, we got, we got friendly private tours. Nice, very yeah. cool. So, for the inner workings, like, I just think that's a good way to segue. I'm really glad you're bringing this up because like that's such a good way to segue into work you haven't got yet. Yeah, that you don't have a good portfolio for, like a a broad portfolio, and it's a, it's a way to get you in there. And 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 I think here's the difference too is because. You, you could say, like, work that we haven't gotten yet, yes, all that. But it's also like, yes, you have, but it's not extremely, extremely, extremely specific. So me and you as, like, oh, we know this typology. We know how everything works. Like, to us, it's not scary or anything like that. But it might be to them. So this is just an ease, ease that in. A building is a building. Like, you're going to follow the code. You're going to, you know, the hardest, one of the hardest parts is figuring out their program. You can do that. You can, you know, this is part of just pulling it out of them and everything. And, and the part that's probably going to be mysterious to both of you, and, and maybe you don't, you know, is, is just those processes. It's just like whatever, if it's an industrial process, if it's a man, you know, uh, I don't even know. Here's the other thing that we know that we have too, that I conveyed. Um, th if they were really grilling you, which they weren't because they, they just weren't the, the key uh, people are has a structural engineering firm done this yes has a mechanical electrical plumbing mm. done this yes okay we're good we <laughs> we can <laughs> we can design facades off th what the structural engineer gives us and space plan and then coordinate everything and then make sure there's no conflictions and yeah. then go through the city and then get your wishes from the client and filter it into reality that's what we do yeah and then show you visually with iterations what you're going to get yeah I will give everybody a hint at an episode that's probably going to come out hopefully sometime this summer is how we are segueing into government work, public work. Um, so far, we've used this service called BidNet, and we've gotten, I think, three three jobs so far in the last three years, so just one a year. So it just pays for itself. It, uh, but uh, there's a way that we're going to talk about later on, so stay tuned for that, about how we're we're accelerating that effort and i think it'll be helpful for everybody else who's like us private trying to go um trying to get some public work and, and expand it, those legs to stand on so to speak so me back to me back to you awesome okay this is a big deal so <coughs> the title of today's episode this is episode 307 is how to develop your staff staff into salesmen and so we last episode we talked about how to successfully launch a Google business listing for a new office. And we're piggybacking on top of that because with our launching in Denver, we are also then needing somebody to basically run the office um, under our direction, do most of the sales down there. And the initial idea with that, in addition to launching the Google business page, is we're going to get a web page up on the website that we're working with our web, our web folks with is th that gets them a sales funnel. So if you're looking to try to develop your sa staff into salesmen, if it's, a, I would say it's obviously a, a senior level staff, maybe they've been here, been here the longest, they're loyal, 
they want to move in that direction. That doesn't mean you're making them owner. It doesn't mean you're making them partner. Um, I think you're making them basically branch manager or, or part or our big management level like you are, you know, tackling every day. So the first thing is you got to do is you get to get them a sales funnel, right? We talked about that with the Google business listing, the web page. You have to have a way to get contacts besides you handing them stuff, which, by the way, you should know, Al, like since I've been back on Thumbtack this year uh, and a little bit last year, but mostly this year, I actually sent over a perfect example for um, Mr. Gresh, who's who's tackling this for us. And it was I I'd sent it over to him specifically because it was in Denver. So I think there's a there's what I'm getting at with the audience here is like maybe there's also, you know, <clears throat> I've I've gotten like six inquiries, seven inquiries in the last week, which is a lot. Usually it's like like two or three. So I was able to I was like, I have plenty of sales leads. Yep. I think you can hand one over to Gresh in that kind of way. Yep. For that. The other thing too, this is just literally just internal. This is like literally why we have inside the firm is to bring up ideas that we need to talk to each other and have space on. So <clears throat> one of the things that we're testing is uh, organic search results and bumping that up versus paid search results. We're doing, we do our internal um, analysis and, and we really try a bunch of systems out so we know what works and what doesn't work. Remember the last meeting that we had with them? Um, the firm is Neil Patel. Uh, they're very expensive, but they're very good. <laughs> yeah. um, they had a graph and it was organic search and non-organic search. So if we wanted to bump up paid search in that location, in this location, and we could talk to them about it, we could isolate it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't think that's a, exactly, that's not, that's not a bad idea. It, I think if I end up getting this big project that um, I've been working on, we would have, we would have the, the revenue to facilitate that. If we wanted to bump it up. Yeah. Just just think it out loud like you are too inside the firm. Uh, okay. So that's number one. Get them a sales funnel. That's that hopefully that's obvious to you. Get them a sales funnel, get them a sales funnel, get get them a sales funnel that is uh you know, two or three pronged, right? A couple different web pages, um, and st stuff like Alex is saying, like specific targeting. Maybe you're also encouraging them, and this is I do want Gresh to do this, is like maybe you're encouraging them to go talk with builders that are local to that uh, jurisdiction. And there are a couple, um, I won't name the name, but like they, they are one of the most high end residential firms in, I think you know who I'm talking about in Denver. Go take them out to lunch, Gresh, here's the card. Mm. Like go talk to them, give them a pitch and give them a hard pitch too. I, I think, I think, I think you go balls to the walls with these pitches where you say, cause I say, I do this with a couple, with some builders that builders, uh, engineers that refer us. I, t I flat out tell them. Oh, you want me to write it down? Yeah. Just killing you? I wrote it upside down. Let me see if I can write it upside down. Yeah. If you know, oh, if you know who that is. YouTube, can you see that? You can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, where was I at in my thought process here? Um, you do, you oh, go balls to the wall. Hard pitch, hard pitch, hard pitch. I flat out tell the engineers, the consultants, and the contractors that we work with. You are the only ones that we recommend. And I hope you can reciprocate that. I get the danger in doing that, but that's how seriously I take when I recommend other professionals to our clients. Like you're I you I'm trusting you that much with our clients in that kind of way. So I think a, a hard push in that kind of way would work really well. That's another idea. <clears throat> Second thing you need to do is you got to check with your state to see if you can even literally do that. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Uh, I was writing some other stuff down. Uh, the other the second thing, when you got to check with your your attorney, you got to check with your state laws is, is what party, what kind of a consent state do you operate in? Meaning, is it a one-party consent state? So what I'm getting at is like, if I wanted to, Go full psychopath on Al. And maybe that'll be in two weeks if I do this. That'll be my middle name. Lance Psychopath okay. Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to go full psychopath on him and record everything, yep. I could walk around with a recording device all day long. I could stick a GoPro. I could have a chest cam on all day long. And Al actually couldn't say anything about it. It's a one-party consent state. So what I'm getting at is like you can record... You can record... 
in any is, who's giving the consent in Colorado? Me. I'm I'm giving the consent to record. All you need is one party to give consent. So what you got to do is, and it might sound weird, but this is what we did is, and actually most of these meetings that I recorded, um, I it was it was either via Zoom or it was like uh, I would have my audio recorder out, where uh, we didn't even get the project. So what we what I did is I recorded about twelve example sales meetings that I had with potential clients, like I said via Zoom or audio, and then I cut them. So that I, you know, I cut out like the awkward part at the beginning, awkward part at the end, if there was any yeah. or any stuff like that. And made them really succinct, exported them. And then they, so they served as, this is how a sales meeting typically goes. And we could show that to our yep. senior staff member that we're going. I've even recorded some people out of state and literally just said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm recording this oh. for, for sales and quality uh, purposes. Um, with that being said... You know, if you have no issue with that, let's move on. I think and that's an excellent caveat to add on to. Yeah. If you feel because it is literally for those, pr- I mean, we are not doing d- anything else. You know what? I I said it in a couple time, uh, a couple of them too. And what I said was at the beginning, is I said, "Hey, is it okay if I record this Zoom meeting? Because I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything that we talk about when I put together my notes at the end." I'm so glad you said that. That's another phrase that I've used, and I forgot to say that. And, and the thing that I've added on to it, and it's true because um, I was talking to a client and they were the, uh, t- earlier and they were talking about their addition and it actually was cool. I'm like, yeah, this is exciting for us. And they're like, and I was excited about it. And they said, great, because like I can't visualize it. Like I can't get into it, blah, blah, blah. I can't get excited about it. So um, one of the other lines that I, I add to that is, uh, you know, we're also, this is very important to us and we want to make sure that we don't miss anything. This is very important to us. This is very important to us. Like, <laughs> that's why we're recording to make sure we don't miss anything. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. So you got to get, I would say, if you can get a round number, something around 12, 12 of these example meetings. And so what we had him do is then we had him watch one a day and take notes. And at the same time, Alex and I then created, and this would be the third thing, is a master sales sheet. And I'm not going to show the audience this. I'm just going to walk through it on our side mm-hmm. um, and describe it. So Alex Alex put together the bulk of it, which was awesome. It saved me a ton of time. I was like, I was just, I mean, I even text Al. I was like, isn't it weird how basically we finish each other's sentences now? Like, like you're inside my brain and I'm inside my, each other's brain. It was the only bad, the the only tweak was like I just had to correct a few of his bad spellings. And what? That was it. What? Other than that, I was what? like, "This is I, I, pretty awesome." I don't believe you. So he started out with, um, and this is again an internal sales document, but it's helpful to try to help people just get off the right path. So he talked about the first thing he talked about is concepts. You know, there was just over an over overarching idea. And Al, feel free to interject here at any time. Interrupt. And then I'll just highlight a few like big points. Right? Understand. So the first thing was like. We need to try to understand, and we also even use the seven habits um, to do this of, like, we must seek to first understand, then to be understood. So Al emphasized the first third to a half of a meeting is always just understanding what they want, what they need, what they fear, um, and probably most important, what they don't want. Uh, listen to words they use often, um, but then be careful about mirroring too much. And that we actually had Alex Gresh and myself read this empathy book, How to Train Your Empathy. Um, but you got to be careful because it can come off disingenuous. Mm-hmm. And then the second big thing was um, building rapport. Wi- or, sorry, building rapport with a yep. client. So getting the client to have a connection with you, how to trust you, um, try to relate them as much as personally possible in the first few minutes. Al gave some examples like maybe they have a dog like yours. Maybe they just got back from vacation you were at. Maybe you see a photo of of uh, or, or a piece of art hanging on the wall that you love, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, ge- I gave an example of like when I met. Um, I think the art one was you. Yeah. 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 I gave an example of the uh, when I met with these folks who built, bought this uh, derelict 10 acre farm in the middle of Boulder County. And how I grew up on a farm and how the owner grew up on a farm. And, uh, you know, and then the other the other thing I emphasize is like when you get a family, when you have a wife, when you have kids, you can even there's even more of a rapport that you can. Yeah. You, you know, your 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 scope is much one to one with them. Ask questions that, uh, about what they want. Take notes. 
Uh, emphasize that you're listening to them. Relate their wants, needs, um, fears to experience you've had at the firm because you're trying to alleviate that, right? We're the trusted advisors. Validate their concerns. And then finally, uh, to start talking about some solutions, right? Um, Alex was talking about like sketching, uh, uh, really emphasizing, you know, and reiterating like what, what they have about their fears. Maybe, maybe you know, some clients like, like they, I think everybody could probably relate to this is they, they're like, well, I just, I'm just worried that knocking down that wall would cost, you know, a crazy amount of money. Now you can ask them, what is a crazy amount of money to you, right? And you're reassuring them and maybe showing them like in a quick sketch, like, no, no, this is pretty easy how to handle that everything. Um, timing, um, trying to understand um, and give them and emphasize with them like, hey, here's, a, here's the next steps. Here's when you can expect a proposal. Um, and then, you know, what their time, I try to understand their timing and where they're at. The delivery of the p- proposal, uh, em- emphasize, you know, what happens when we deliver it. And then we even, I even typed up and added to this of like, Here's two examples of once you sent when you're going to go send this proposal of uh, templates that I use in my email to get them to watch this also internal video that I made that helps them understand um, the, the, our proposal that we put together and then what to do next um, with all of that. And then Al came up with this awesome acronym uh, and then I added to it actually. It was first he said it was R U S T D or R U S T and I said R-U-S-T-D, so it's rusted. And that's the idea with, just to reemphasize it, like you are going, it's... Uh, so, so we switched the first two letters. Like, yep. Because first you need to understand, but you start with R, rapport, then understand, yep. then selling the solution, yep. then timing, mm-hmm. and then delivery of a proposal. So the, the concept is you need to rust, uh, knock the rust off when you are going to meet with the client and get things moving, right? If you were building anything that was rusty and you wanted to use that, knock the rust off, now you can get going and, and go from there. Then, then he put together this awesome list, bullet point list of the client wishes that we're trying to meet slash reveal, emphasize the number one goal of the meeting is to help the client explore what they really want and need by, casual, by basically casually interviewing them. Are then, you sure I did this? I thought you did this. Nope. Then you put a basic out. You did great, dude. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to <laughs> venerate Al here. And then he put together a basic outline for a sales meeting, like two examples of it. Um, and then, and then finally culminated with, okay, now if you're past the 50% park of the meeting, now it's your turn, the tour is over. And then here's a bunch of questions that you can start asking them that are, that are pretty common. Mm-hmm. Last part is proposal presentation, conclusion, expectations. This ended up being a 3000 word document, six pages long, but so, but it was so like, um, it was so good to just make just see like your business partner's on the same page as you. You're on the same page as him. The sales techniques are the, and so it made it so it made it made it concrete for me that like we can replicate this. The only way but one of the best pieces of business advice I ever got was from Robert Wygant, Sumex Design is if you aren't ready to if you are not prepared to replicate yourself and repeat yourself, then you'll never expand as a business. Like you have to be able to replace yourself. Do you want to know one of the biggest uh, reasons why firms lose money? Yes. I and and y- you, after all this, you'll probably uh, accept it immediately. Um, different and variable ways of proposing, um, bidding, and managing. Because just think, if you're even a big firm and you have different salespeople, different teams, right? And let's say one team is going after um, a, a big manufacturing facility and they charge X, you know, I'm saying $100,000, mm-hmm. and another charge is 70, and they're all over the place. Like, that's a $30,000 difference. Like, what, what's going on? And, and let's say one isn't up to speed. So, like, let's say the $100,000 one is what you need, but they haven't went through the course. They aren't as good of as a salesperson. So, the 70 get it. And you could say, oh, yeah, that's just where the mm-hmm. market is, and, and that's why we got it. But maybe it's not. Maybe, maybe they're just not as good as a salesperson, right? So, now you're losing out. Like, and then take that times time over years and take that time scale. Like, whew, you're losing a lot if you don't get on the same page, start uh, marching to the same beat of the drum. Yeah. Got to get your framework in, in, in discipline equals freedom. Your framework allows for uh, flexibility. 
yep. and, and, and working it through and then just, just being on the same page. Okay. Then you gave them the proposal templates, which we have, and then emphasize, hey, the importance of story and now make it your own. I saw his... Make it your own. Big deal. Have you seen... I seen his this morning. It's awesome. It's awesome. And what, what it is, is a, at the end of our proposal, which again is, if you've been a long-time listener, is a hybrid proposal. It's half graphic, half written, because we're architects. We're supposed... Yeah, I'm looking at you like you need to... Words are not enough to explain what you do in, in your crazy contracts. Um, but the last part is basically a mini portfolio. And the idea is... That's why it was so important for me to show... Um, Mr. Gresh, these example sales meetings, because then he saw how I told a story at the end that was very personal, personal slash professional. I mean, just to get that in there yep. and he got it. And it's like, oh, and I even, I even just so you know, I told him yesterday, you know, he, he had me take a look at it and I said, yeah, this is great. I go, just so you know, it's okay. After you do like maybe three or four of these sales meetings, you're going to understand how you want to change it. Mm. So if you need to redo it again, I want you to really uh make sure that you write down like let's say he's done with the meeting he gets yep. into his car open your tech open your sketchbook immediately and, and write down shoot the last part would have been an even smoother story yep. if i would have had this picture flipped over to this picture and stuff because i did it myself yep in our proposal yeah then you think hey maybe it's appropriate to stop there pat yourself on the back we did not do that <coughs> so lance oh. got him the template and then I gave them videos of going over two groups of concepts, right? Because now you have this proposal and, and everything has been about what it means to the customer and customer focus. That's great. Now, what does it mean internally to us, right? So uh, I like to talk about how there's three ways to grow your ca cash, right? One is lead flow slash cash flow, right? Another is your price. And then the other is the structure and delivery of how you do stuff. So how does the contract meet those items and how do you execute the contract so like a whole couple of videos about that and then uh, a whole video about what's important to the contract what have we added what's what do you not take out you know sometimes clients like question hourly or question all, all these different things all these things that we've added to that are important to it now he knows why now he knows why it's laid out that way and you might think like hey they've been in your system for a while they've done projects you don't know what they just get piecemeal. So you might as well go over it comprehensive. And once like you have those meetings recorded, like once it's recorded, it's recorded, right? And you can update them over time, but now it's plug and play. I didn't have to spend an hour and a half talking about all these concepts to him. I literally came in this morning. I was sick yesterday and he watched all of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's so good. That's so good. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Uh, we have a special guest, Al. Um, yep, great. Really, really special guest. I don't one, one of my favorite people, honestly. Hey, and if I, if I'm, if I, if, I, if I'm known for anything, it's, it's knowing yeah. if you should read a book or you should just watch Instagram reels because his Instagram reels are way better than his book. No way. <laughs> no, untrue. Have you read his whole book? No, you quit. I quit. I'm uh, the Instagram reel. I'm telling you. Yeah. All you got to do is listen to the Instagram reels. Over and the whole summer, you're going to hear a new... He's going to be reading for us every week. Yep. Um, and then read his book. It's awesome. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly so cool. do that. Okay. I love how he uses brute force to conquer everything from physical to mental. Like, like, I'm an idiot teenager. I'm going to read this science book four times, eight times. I'm just... I'm going to do it and answer all the questions. Like, I don't know... Somehow I got through middle school and now I'm in high school. You know how thick those science books or whatever. Just I'm gonna read through it eight times <laughs> because I don't know anything about this. Oh, I, I, I don't. Force. I don't know Brute why force. I kept hearing about a special guest David Goggins yep. over the past week, but for some reason he was in the ether, kind of like uh, when Tate was. And uh, I just I so I I went on in my Instagram and I I just went I like for a whole night I just watched video after video after video and I was like, this man is awesome. Did did you like look in the mirror and see David Goggins and go whoa? No, I I did I did what he did where he says uh, I I there's a there's one reel that you guys will hear eventually here and it's he's he talks about uh, the inner voice and there's two inner voices one is um one is your little inner bitch and one is is not one is like a beast and he emphasized like 
looking at his, he's like, I've been thinking a lot lately. And uh, I've been thinking too much. Whoa. I like and, it. And, uh, I, I, you know, this morning I, went to, I wanted to go for a run. And I looked at my shoes for 30 minutes. And I could hear this little voice in my head. And I, I recorded the voice. And I played it back to myself. And I sounded like a straight bitch. And then I decided to put my shoes on. And then he's running. I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is like, I love it. Like, Dude, what a cool exercise to do, honestly. Did you hear what he did after he went on Joe Rogan? The, no. I mean, maybe. Okay. So, obviously, if you go on Joe Rogan, millions and millions of people are going to listen, right? And not everyone are going to be fans of you because it's just that's what life yeah. is, right? Yeah. So, a whole bunch of people sent him mean stuff. You know, like on Instagram, Twitter. Just called him everything. Oh, just, and then he just watched it all. No, no. He took all of them. He put them all in a Word document or however he did it. And then he read it to himself. And then when he's working out, he hits play. Sick. <laughs> The dude is awesome. I love how he just rips the bandaid off of life. He just dude. runs right at it. Can you imagine working out and just he be like raw hearing, dog's life? Yeah. People like you are a what I don't even Happy. know what they would say, but I'm sure I'm sure it was plentiful. I lo- he lives his life fearlessly. I just it's inspiring. Okay, here's David Goggins. People go, What is your biggest fear in life? And my biggest fear honestly was Let's say this. Let's say uh, I don't care if you believe in God or not. I don't care. So this this is play a game with me. Let's say let's say you're God, and we have a big fucking long line of people. And I made to heaven. Seventy five years old. I'm three hundred pounds. I made to heaven. I worked for Ecolab my entire life, spraying for cockroaches. That's what I did. But I'm dead. I'm in heaven now. And you are at you're you're judging us all now, David Goggins. I see my name. I see all this shit. And God goes, hey, you say read this, man. And I'm reading this list, and I'm seeing 182 pounds, Navy SEAL, Ranger School, motivational speaker, changing lives. Okay, man, pull up record, all this shit. And I'm like, that's not me, man. And God looks at me and says, that's who you were supposed to be. Oh. Had you heard that before? Oh, no. How good is that? No. How good is that? So, that's Powerful. Really so I'm reading, uh, it's called Centennial. It's about the Platte Rivers here in Colorado and all the Native Americans and all that. And, and the, the white people were a problem. Okay. Let's face it. Yeah. Native Americans were also a problem. There's <laughs> a lot of problems. <laughs> there was a lot You of need problems. to read Empire of the Summer Moon. I'm How far t- are you? <laughs> I've got, uh, I should finish it this weekend hiking. Yes. I've got five or six hours left. It is a 16 hour book. I, I even listened to it at 1.25, 1.5. It's a slog. It's insane. It's epic. It, there was problems. The West from the 1800 West was problems. <laughs> it was a very big problem. Anyways, they go to meet, and uh, one of these uh, guys, it, he's half breeds. So they had a bunch of half breeds, which is weird that they called them that, but like a bunch of white trappers um, would marry N- Native American wives. And, and they've been following this, this one of this kid throughout his whole lives, and then they meet with him at, um, they just go out to meet with all these Native Americans, and, and they see him there. And they go, uh, I can see in his eyes that he's now, he's a man in his 40s. And he has that look that many men in their 40s have where they realize they made too many mistakes and there's nothing they can do about it. David Goggins is like, you can. You can. That's a lot of people. Yeah. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you, David, for being on the show. Yeah. I really, I, so I, I had my wife listen. And that was, it was almost too much for her. She couldn't, she just couldn't get in that mindset. So I'm, I'm trying to be empathetic here. Like, I, I don't know if it's, if that's a bro mindset, you know, what he just said in that kind of way. But like, I loved it so much. I just thought like, that's why you can't take every day. You can't take any, you can't take time for granted. You can't take life for granted. You can't take experience for granted, especially when you get to me and Al's age, right? Al's 38, I'm 40. And we're, this is literally middle age because the average male only lives to like 72 these days, 76, something like wow. that. Like your life is half over. So you need to run at it fearlessly. The only thing you should fear is God. And, and for exactly that reason that like David Goggins said, like, what if that was your experience when you get there? Yeah. Like that, you don't want to do that. You want to, yeah. you want to, you want whatever God puts up to be like, you did it. 
that's what I, that's, that's what, we, that's, and I, I get the idea of like, oh, yeah, I didn't get to choose. No, 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 you get to choose. You get to choose your path. That's the whole point of what he's saying. But here, here's the difference too. Like, okay, it's a thought experiment and it doesn't have to be David Goggins way. It yeah. could be, I am a loving husband, you know, like I am, uh, 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 a great coworker, you know, like, like meaning you don't have to run up a hill to make a meaningful life. You can make a meaningful life in the people around you. Like there's all these, I don't know all the different scenarios that people want to label as accomplishments, but I'm sure there's plenty. Yeah. 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 What do we got next now? Let's bring down the staff for ARE Jeopardy. All right. Question number one, according to the international building code, what is the maximum allowable building height for a group R occupancy? Type 5B building, that automatic sprinkler system, S13R. Is it A, 40 feet, B, 50 feet, C, 60 feet, D, 75 feet? Wouldn't it be great if jurisdictions matched the building code? You know what I mean? Like, hey, this is, you know, a group R zone. Height. Oh, should we say 30 feet? No, let's say 40. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what do we got? 40, 40, 40, it's 40, you didn't get 40, you said 60. All right, question number two. According to the same book, what's the maximum allowable building height for Group R occupancy Type 5B building in a non-sprinklered, uh, oh, sorry, you were right. Only you were right. 60 feet, it was 60 feet, not 40 feet. Non-sprinkler building, is it A, 40 feet, B, 50 feet? C, 60 feet. D, 75 feet. Yep, it is 40. What's crazy, too, is if you look in the new code, there's that there's different type of sprinkler systems. Like the 13D still leaves you at 40 feet. doesn't bump you up to 60 feet, but apparently it's cheaper. So if you're not going for that. Okay, there we go, Lance. According, number three, according to R... 905-.2.2 of the International Residential Code. Asphalt shingles shall only be used on roof slopes of how many units vertical in 12 units horizontal or greater? A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D, 1. Correct answer is A, 2. <laughs> According to, and I'm going to go I'm going to go over this cuz this is like I, I, there's a there's a piece missing from the code. There's a piece missing from the code. I I don't understand why they like, like they, they 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 made it purposely confusing. I think. According number four, according to R nine zero five dot two dot two for roof slopes from two units vertical to twelve units horizontal, what underlayment application is required? Is it a a single layer of fifteen pound asphalt impregnated felt? B a double layer of fifteen pound asphalt asphalt impregnated felt c a triple layer of 15 pound asphalt impregnated felt or d a quadruple layer of 15 pound asphalt impregnated felt i don't even think there would be a uh correct answer is uh b double layer of 15 pound what do we got for scores okay ross 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 so Six. ross inspired the last two just so you know collusion um, because we were in a uh basically a value engineering meeting and we got to talking about roof slopes which by the way al we pulled up your awesome examples of the 212 pitch modern roof. Mm. It was very, very helpful for them to, to get them to visualize it. And then I showed my house too, and I said, these are like, this is exactly what we're talking about to make it yep. look modern yep. and not. <coughs> um, so uh, 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 Ross looked up the code, text me, and what it's missing is it's, it's missing the first part. Uh, from what I could see, Ross, when you were looking at it, basically, because it says, uh, so, because like the Denver, Denver says the Denver code says here, where is it at? Let me look it up real quick. Asphalt. Oh, I didn't spell it right. Asphalt. Perfect. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it says this is what they're missing, Ross. So like the Denver code says 
they tell you this is the roofing checklist. It says asphalt shingles can be used. Uh, asphalt shingles shall be used only on roof slopes two twelve or greater. The code seems like it's missing that because if you look at the code, it says from four roof slopes from two units vertical and twelve units horizontal up to t- four units vertical and two and twelve units horizontal. Underlayment shall be two layers applied in the following manner. So they don't explicitly say it like Denver's that you need two layers if you're between. No, no, no. They don't say asphalt shingles shall be used only on roof slopes greater of two twelve of, of two twelve or greater. They omit that in the code and they say they just jump right into the next sentence, which is yeah, the underlayment. Bam. Where's That's where, why he wins. Where, where at? Where at? Give him your stamp. Yeah. So Don't you think that should have been first? Right. But yeah, yeah. So, so they end up saying it late, later on down the road. Yeah. But even the one you texted me this morning. Yeah, that omitted it. Yeah, that omitted it. So, what Ross and I are getting at is. If you're listening, 2021 IRC res- code, like, I think you need to have the actual citation of 9052.2.2 slope match. It's got to, you got to be one to one with the table because the table gets confusing because you guys omit that. I think that's what that's, I think that's necessary to do that. And then we're good. Are you saying that? So can you please update the tag in the template now? Because <laughs> 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 we took it out and said you couldn't do it. That's cool. all I got. A little bit lean would help everyone around. We're getting leaner. Hey, it was a good double check. I think it was a good double check. Because who knows if the code would have changed it. I just thought, I no. thought even, I went even crazier with it. I was thinking, what if the 2021 codes actually did change it? You can't do that. You, like, wouldn't, I are, my opinion about why we have to sprinkle everything now is there was lobbyists from, the, from all of these fire people that went into the governments or these codes and said, we want this in place now in 2020, 2012 moving forward so we get all this sprinkler work for single-family homes. Like, I would think that the, like, Owens Corning or whatever would push back and go, you're taking a ton of work away from us if we can't use asphalt shingles from 212 to 412 now Yeah, type of thing. So it was a good cross-check feedback loop, all of that. Awesome. That's it. Take us out. Uh, if you like this episode, you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, leave us a positive comment. If you're listening on iTunes, five-star review. We'll see you next week.